Hello, welcome to the Betwiths. This is a Throwback Thursday video in which a group of like-minded YouTube channels come together from around the world to fetch you memories from their past. In this video, we're going to look at part three of Sharon and Art Mine's wedding day and going to look at the best man's speech because it goes on for quite a while so this one is totally the best man's speech and you've watched this video remember to click on the end card to watch the other channels in this collaboration or by clicking in the link below Thanks for that. <laughs> right, well, I've been asked to keep this speech going for as long as it'll take for Gunn and Sharon's marriage to be consummated tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Welcome to Glenn and Sharon's first wedding. Uh, <laughs> that was the first turn. Welcome, firstly, welcome to Glenn and Sharon's wedding. And um, for those of you who aren't sure and I just want to clarify it. This is not Ken Dodd's Diddy Men's Reunion. <laughs> That's next door. Fornication. Um, <coughs> sorry, for an occasion, like today, I decided that I'd research the role of the best man on the internet. After spending hours and hours surfing the net and seeing what I could find, there's some really, really cool stuff on there. I couldn't find anything at all for a best man's speech. So I thought to myself, well, why not look at what Glenn and I have got in common? Surprisingly enough, I've known Glenn all my life. <laughs> Bizarrely enough, Glenn's known me all mine too. So, I'm going to start there. So my next attempt was to look at what I knew about Glenn, and this is where things got really interesting. Glenn, as some of you may know or may not know, was born on the 24th of July. It was a Friday. And still affectionately known around some maternity wards as Ugly Friday. <laughs> coincidence? Coincidence. Now, being a child in the 60s, Glenn obviously managed to get through to adult life relatively unscathed. And I'm not saying that Glenn was a slow starter, I would say he was unique. After all, not many people can graduate from nursery school at ten and a half. <laughs> but how proud we all are today that he's grown into the ruthless businessman that we all know and love. Now being the big brother in the house, or perhaps just the biggest person in the house, <laughs> Glenn was never one to shirk his responsibilities. In fact, he shirked everybody else's as well. <laughs> A typical example of this would be when he was still at home, and as most people do these days, you have an alarm in the house, and during the night, the alarm went off. Who was first out of the blocks? Boom. <laughs> Down the stairs, fully armed with a slipper. Next. Dad. Smallest. Fully armed with Mum. Followed by me. Fully armed by Mum and Dad. And once we'd done a sweep of the house and made sure that everything was right, no attempts had been made to break in or anything like that, we started to head back upstairs, the alarm was still blaring. As I'm wandering back up the stairs, this thing appears out of Glenn's bedroom window, bed, uh, bedroom door, window even maybe, no, door, swathed in his duvet, staggering down the, the landing, opens the airing cupboard door, bangs on the wall for a bit, till Dad has switched the alarm off downstairs. <laughs> Swearing and cursing at the alarm. He switched it off, he's upstairs. Turns around, staggers back down the landing, back into his bedroom, not to be seen until the next morning. <laughs> it might come as a surprise to some of you to know that Glenn's actually a fussy eater. <laughs> Serious? He is a fussy eater. If it's food, he's <coughs> not fussed. <laughs> and the only time Glenn's ever actually shown any exception to food was in a discussion with my Uncle Bob once. At which point, Uncle Bob was eating his food and he finished. He said, do you know, Glenn, he said, you're just like me. 
Good I've heard this one before as well. Don't spoil it. You like that. At which point Uncle Bob says, You're just like me. I says, what do you mean, Uncle Bob? He says, Anything that goes in your mouth, you'll eat it. Yes, Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob says, The only thing I've never liked, Lenny, is sauerkraut. No, Uncle Bob. But I've never had kraut. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in my opinion, some of you have different ideas, but in my opinion, Glenn is actually an undiscovered genius. And we referred to this point before, but I just want to expand on it a little bit. Because who else could get away with a speech about absolutely nothing and bring the house down? As we referred to before, it was a speech down at the Village Hotel in Berry. It's one of the first speeches that I'd gone to with Glenn. Um, Dad was there, and I think Uncle Stuart was there as well. Quite a few people were there to support him. The area rally, if I'm, if I'm correct, yeah? Round table charge. Round table charge. <laughs> Just rewind that a bit, please. <laughs> it was a round table charter, and Glenn was due as chairman of the, the, the vice, world, chairman. vice chairman of the table to give a speech. What the world's a critic? <laughs> okay. So, just a brief excerpt of the speech, as tradition dictates, was that you would talk about the people, the guests on top of the to start with, in this case, Dawn, and Michael, and Peter, and blah, blah, blah. So, an excerpt from his speech went something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Mr. Jones from Area 97. I can't remember the guy's name of the year, but just bear with me. So I wanted to find out something about Mr. Jones, and so I thought, I know, I'll ring Mr. Wright. He'll be able to tell me about it. So I asked Mr. Wright about Mr. Jones, and guess what? <coughs> Nothing. So I thought, I know, I'll ask about Mr. <coughs> Smith. So I rung Mr. Wright again, guess what? Nothing. So I thought, I know, I'll ask about Mr. Cartwright. Guess what? Nothing. And this went on and on down so we got to Kev Lloyd. And he says, I know him, but I don't want to talk about him. So we'll move on, and this just went on the way down the table. So eventually the guys at the back of the table, the serviettes up in white surrender and just falling on the floor, killing themselves laughing. And to me that was absolute genius. Another reason why I think Glenn's an undiscovered genius was he invited me around to his house once, very proud. He said, come round, look at this. I've made a water feature, a themed water feature. So I got round to his house and I got to his garden and there it was, a hole in the floor with water in it. So I said, well what's the thing? He said, water. <laughs> genius, absolute genius. But at this point I'd like to actually warn Sharon about something about Glenn. I know it's a bit late and we got married and it's only like 12 hours, well, 5, 6 hours since they got married, but I'd like to warn you, Glenn can't to be, and don't be surprised by this, a bit short tempered. <laughs> Now, this has had a few embarrassing repercussions for Glenn. One of which has culminated in him actually being barred from being q <laughs> The reason? Well, one day Glenn went in, he'd had a particularly bad day at work, and storming through the doors to get some materials for work, and this little snotty nosed greeter met him at the door. Excuse me, sir, do you want decking? <laughs> Glenn's natural instincts get the first punch in work before kid didn't have a chance. <laughs> but as most of you may not be aware of how Glenn and Sharon actually met. Now they've all told you different stories of it was this and it was that. I can actually reveal to you today the truth of how they met. It was the fact that Sharon's bravery and sheer guts saving Glenn from a plate worse than death is how they met. Because one day Glenn had decided being the super sportsman that he is and the skydiver as Pete says, the car driver, sorry, get a too mixed up. That he'd actually go horse riding. <coughs> so he went and picked the filly that he wanted to ride on. And uh, so, oh, nice steady little counter. Is that right, Dawn? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. The horse then proceeded that it would go a bit fast into a gallop. He started panicking a little bit then, not sure on riding horses, not sure. He started into a full blown trot, going as fast as it could while he was <laughs> dripping on. <laughs> Trot not the right word? No, okay. Right, but it went as fast as it could. As fast as horses can go, it went, if not faster. Now, I'm not saying he panicked, but he did. Okay? And he's holding on for grim death. He's got his arms around the neck of the horse like that. Hold on, his, his legs are turning to jelly. He's, he's screaming and shouting. He's got tears rolling down his face. Help, help, help. Help me save me. Somebody save me. So then Sharon come charging over, bent over and pulled the plug out of the machine. <laughs> 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 I 
Uh, it's probably time for me to start wrapping up this, this speech, so I just need to say a few, few thank yous. First, obviously, to the photographer doing such a super job today. And with a little bit of effort, camera trickery, stuff like that, I'm sure you'll be able to get the rabbit ears from behind Glenn's head. So, Mr. Lloyd, I'm sure that was you. Uh, also, to the video person, Neil, over here, speaking, uh, speaking, recording. <laughs> speaking is recording. Uh, for recording this in and dribble, and I'm sure you'll edit the good bit, the bad bits out and make me sound, look, sound pretty good. Let's try that again. To Neil, the video recorder. <laughs> Okay, also to the vicar for the service today. I'm sure you'll agree it's absolutely fantastic, nice and pleasant and holy and uh, respectful. And I've got through as the quicker, granted, but thank you to the vicar as well. It was absolutely super, really. Thank you very much. And to the bridesmaids for looking after Sharon's dress today, making sure Sharon got to the church on time. I'm sure you'll agree they all look lovely and cute, wherever she's gone, lovely. <coughs> I'd say that the bridesmaid looks cute, but Mick's bigger than me, so... <laughs> He's already threatened to bat my dad once, so... <laughs> and also to the page boys, who again, I'm sure you'll agree, were pretty cute and reasonably well behaved in the church, so well done to those guys as well. But finally, most importantly, to some people without whom today we wouldn't be here. Getting merry, having a nice meal, and generally just having a good time bringing all relatives and different families together. So ladies and gentlemen, if you'd just like to raise your glasses, and I'm going to propose a toast. To the bar and catering staff. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> but before I really do finish, you can sit down for a minute, folks. This is like sick of got all the seven pages, yeah. It's going to be very nice. Before I really do finish, though, I just want to share this final piece of Glenism with you. Now, as our partners and that are aware went to York to the stag do. Nice! Sorry, Nice! nice. We agreed it was Nice boys, didn't we? Yeah, Nice, right, okay. We went to Nice for the stag do, that's where we really, really, really went, honest. And um, after we'd been out on the Saturday night and got back to our bedroom and I was talking to Glenn in bed and I said to him, look, Glenn, just want to be sure that you're happy. Want to be sure you know what's going to happen today. What do you really want at your marriage? So he sat there for a bit and he wasn't snoring, so I guess he wasn't asleep. And uh, contemplated this for a bit and deliberated for it and he said, what I want is I'm looking for a partner. A partner, a lover, a confidant, and a mate. Someone in whom I can share my thoughts, hopes, and aspirations. With someone I can grow old with through the good times and the bad. Well, that just got me. I thought, wow, that's just fantastic. And inspired by this as a basis for a fantastic marriage. And I asked Sharon the same question a few days later. Sharon, what are you looking for out of a marriage? And again, she thought about it for a few minutes. Contemplated it, liberated it, she said, a new toaster, a microwave, a bunch of granola. Well, seriously, I'm sure you'll agree that today's been absolutely fantastic so far, as Peter said, so far, for the evening school. So far, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, the other person that I think actually on the bridesmaids today was the bride herself. Okay? And um, not a single mention of the Uncle Lumpus, so we'll move swiftly on. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please be upstanding and seriously charge your glasses this time. <laughs> so, Glenn and Sharon, a match made in heaven and lit on earth that will hopefully burn to the end of the day. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and anybody who doesn't fit into any of the above categories, I give you Mr. and Mrs. Beckwith, Glenn and Sharon, the bride and groom. I thank you. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, if you did give us a thumbs up if you do, haven't done already if you could subscribe that would be wonderful it helps our channel grow and if, remember if you do subscribe hit the notification icon that way you'll get notified when we post another video out it's free to subscribe it's free to get notified it doesn't cost you a penny but it does help our channel grow so if you could subscribe that would be great also remember to watch the videos from the other channel channels in this throwback thursday which you'll be able to do by clicking on the link here or in the link below thank you for watching goodbye